it's Lizzie. So these are 13 attractive qualities in guys and this could probably also be attractive qualities in anyone in any situation. But I tried to make this general and not just about what I particularly like because if I talked about what I want in a guy, no one would be able to relate to it. But I'm really curious what all of you think and qualities that you're looking for in someone. So comment below what you find attractive and also put your Myers-Briggs because I think that would be so interesting, different personalities and different things that they value. I am an ESTJ. I'm sure that influences some of this. These memories won't let me be, so we'll just play them back. I see summer rain and that autumn change. It all came so fast. The smell of wood burning, sparks jumping around. I... Number one, having strong opinions and being assertive. I really love hearing people's ideas on how they think about the world. And so when someone has really strong political, philosophical, or religious convictions on some issue, that is attractive. It shows that someone reads and thinks and listens and cares. Of course, being able to express your beliefs in a respectful and rational way is also really important. But I see apathy as the worst quality in anyone. So even if I completely disagree with someone's position, just the fact that they have a really strong conviction and care about expressing it, that's really attractive. There's nothing subtle here. Ah, in my heart, there's an empty space bigger than it used to be. Number two, loving doing dishes. This really shows someone's character in that it expresses initiative. And it is a servant-hearted mentality that all of us should strive to have. A guy I was with in college, when we first started dating, we were at a campus ministry retreat and you could sign up to do kitchen duty to help cook or clean. And every single mealtime, he was in the kitchen doing the dishes, helping clean. I remember at the time thinking, it was so impressive. Also, two of my Christian guy friends who I actually worked with in Thailand on mission trips, it just stood out to me that every time they came to my apartment, they would immediately do the dishes, they would dry them, they would put them away. It was just this above and beyond attitude of serving and helping out. And this is a practical thing too, to having a successful marriage because you're gonna have to live with someone in the future and you're gonna share a kitchen and make food together. I remember growing up as a little girl watching my parents interact and they would always argue with each other over who gets to do the dishes. They would be like, no, let me do the dishes. No, 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 let me do the dishes. And that is relationship goals. And that's what I want in the future as well. With my feelings on fire, guess I'm a bad liar. Number three, listening and asking questions. I really appreciate this quality in anyone. There are two types of listening. There is passive listening where you're waiting for the person to stop talking and thinking about what you're going to say next. But then active listening is when you genuinely care about someone is saying, you're processing and analyzing and really fully listening. I love that and I think that it's really important if you're interested in dating someone to notice how they are around other people. Obviously, if you're in an infatuation stage of a relationship, you want to listen to each other and you want to know everything about each other. But if I'm interested in someone, I find it interesting to see how they are when they're around their friends and how they listen or around someone who they just met. And then being able to ask follow-up questions and really be a leader in the conversation and get people to open up, that's just a quality I find really attractive. I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying. Number four, having a high work ethic. The inner ESTJ in me, this is everything. And this also goes along with just being passionate about something in your life. If someone works really hard in school or at their job or at some activity or art form that they love, that is so amazing. To me, having energy and drive and this 100% attitude and wanting excellence in whatever you're doing, I really love seeing that in other people. about ideas and asking for our opinions and viewpoints. I talked about this directly in my last video, Stop Calling Girls Beautiful, where I basically said that there's this overabundance of complimenting women on how we look and telling young girls that they look cute or they look beautiful. And I just think that ingrains in everyone that we're really valuing women for how we look or for our bodies rather than for our minds. A lot of people who value equality use the word feminism and I do identify as a feminist and I've even gotten some of my guy friends to also 
also start calling themselves a feminist to not be afraid of the word But I really don't care that much about the label What I really really value is when guys show through their actions that they do value equality I would much prefer to feel intellectually respected by a guy because we're talking about ideas than to be called beautiful or attractive or be complimented on different aspects of myself. I think actions speak a lot stronger. I let you in the dark. You let me out. Number six, changing themselves. Anytime a guy verbalizes an aspect of himself that is awful and wrong and that needs to change, when someone tells me that they're working on this aspect of themselves or they're praying about it, it's the same attitude of being assertive and having ambition just in their character development. About a year ago, I was talking to a guy and we were having a conversation and he was explaining his mentality and making a certain decision. And he was explaining to me his thought process. Like if I choose this, I'm more likely to work on this and I really need to change this part of myself. And just admitting, yeah, I struggle with this and I'm working on changing it. Hearing that was very impressive and it caused me to respect him even more. A huge part of Christianity is recognizing our flaws and becoming better people. And if someone does not have this attitude of wanting to change aspects of themselves, that will be awful for a relationship because there's a lot of times when someone will be doing something unintentionally that will be hurting you or hurting someone else. And if you communicate this to someone and they don't think anything is wrong with them and they're not working on changing aspects of themselves or being a better person that's just going to be really frustrating and invalidating to me the whole point of relationships is changing each other to be more like Christ I wrote an article on my blog years ago called you can't change people except when you do just because I feel so strongly there's this thing in our culture where people are against changing and don't try to change someone in a relationship what do you mean the whole point of relationships is that we change Can you when they cry. One of the things that makes me the most angry about our culture is how guys are taught to not be emotional and that feeling strongly or crying is a sign of weakness and that it's not masculine. That lie is so hurtful and it discourages men from being vulnerable and from fully knowing themselves emotionally. It is the most damaging thing. And so when I meet a guy who's been able to overcome that mindset, it's really refreshing. I was talking to a guy earlier this year and he was telling me, yeah, I was at church and I cried. I felt so close to God and it meant so much to me because he trusted me and it was meaningful crying. And this is something that I noticed with my guy best friends as well, where they will talk about how they cried if something really hurt them or affected them, or even if they were just watching a movie and felt some strong emotion. And sometimes it's presented in such a chill way like yeah that made me cry and I love and am so grateful that amongst my friends it is this normalizing of guys having emotions but when it comes to relationships all females really really love having that vulnerability and trust being able to openly talk about your emotions really shows that and it's something that we all find really attractive being able to apologize and say I'm sorry. There's something going around right now that females apologize too much. I think that that is true with insignificant or kind of tiny things, but I think that everyone regardless of gender needs to be comfortable apologizing to other people when they come to you and tell you that you have hurt them or done something to upset them. This one relationship I was in, I remember after it ended, he had hurt me so much done so many things that had directly made me cry and I remember thinking he never apologized he never said I'm sorry and he was someone who was extremely emotionally invalidating and it just shows a lack of emotional awareness a lack of being able to take responsibility most of the time if you hurt someone it's not because you're intentionally trying to hurt them and so I think that every single person needs to become comfortable saying I'm sorry even if you didn't try to do something wrong. And like I said, men and women, everyone needs to practice this in every single relationship in their life because the relationship is always more important than being right. We were staying in Paris to get away from your parents and I thought, well, wow. 
Number nine, working out a lot. I feel like part of loving yourself is taking care of your body and exercising is a really fundamental part of that. People who just hate working out, never get around to it, I see that as a mental laziness. I know this video is making me come across as extremely judgmental. I definitely am. That's something I always am working on. And I understand that some guys lift primarily because they care about how their body looks and that's the only reason that they go to the gym. But I'm someone who also goes to the gym a lot and so I see guys weightlifting and it's something that's very intensive and takes a lot of time and consistency to build up muscles and to maintain. And so I really, really respect any guy who goes to the gym a lot. Even when it is that cliche frat guy type who's checking himself out in the mirror, I respect that guy because he is consistently going to the gym. Out on the terrace, we breathe in the air of this small town on our own. Number 10, eating healthy. This goes along with number nine. It's part of loving yourself. The way you eat will determine what diseases you get in the future and how long you live. You will have more energy and feel better if you eat healthy. So whenever I meet a guy who is really into eating meat and thinks that eating vegetarian or vegan is not manly, uh, you know those guys who think that eating steak or bacon is a defining characteristic of being a man. It shows this warped, weak, surfacey view of what manhood is. And whenever I meet a guy who has researched nutrition and really cares about the health of his body and his effect on the environment, that's important and shows long-term thought. being able to cook. So this kind of goes along with being an independent person. Anyone, male or female, who doesn't know how to cook and is past college age or partway through college, I just have less respect for. There's no excuse to not learn how to cook. There's tons of recipes online. There are entire YouTube channels dedicated to teaching you how to cook. I understand if you grow up in a way that your family doesn't cook and you never learned, but you don't need to remain helpless. We all have the basic human need to eat, and I don't understand how everyone doesn't just have this evolutionary desire to know how to cook and feed themselves. I love cooking and I make food for my friends and family a lot, but also my guy friends will also make food for me and it's this give and take and I think that's really, really healthy. You're looking right at me and I'm looking away. You're telling me everything. Number 12, having strong friendships and relationships in your life. I really value this in people because I think love is the greatest purpose in life, whether it is with God, family, friends, strangers you pass by. And this relates to what I said about how when a guy can openly talk about crying, it's really impressive. I think it's the same thing because American culture is very focused on productivity and success. And I think we have a really warped view of what success means. What matters the most in life are your relationships. And so when I see a guy who has really strong friendships with other people and is really close to his family and likes having long in-depth conversations with people in his life and just prioritizes them and loves spending time with people, that is really attractive. And something else is just being able to make time for people. I think a lot of people view their time as their own. And so when someone is willing to drop whatever they're doing and go help someone, go be with a friend. And something else that I've kind of noticed as a red flag is that if someone is not able to have vulnerability in their relationships with their family or with a lot of close friends, it's really unhealthy. I think that some people have this attitude where they're always in a relationship and they just do not value their friends as much. And that's not having a balanced view in life. And so I think everyone should really, really, really prioritize friendships. And it felt like magic, but I knew I couldn't have it. Number 13, valuing knowledge and having this attitude of lifelong learning. A lot of people entertain themselves by watching movies or playing video games, listening to music. And I do all of that. And my guy friends who I respect the absolute most love playing video games. I love gaming with them on occasion and watching them play video games and learning about what they're doing. But I think that there needs to be a balance. And I think that in 
American culture sometimes we can have this inflated view of leisure time. I'm not against having fun, although sort of as an ESTJ I feel like I do not value fun very much, but I believe that when people can read and research and inform themselves on what is going on in the world, they will have a more powerful impact on other people. Knowledge is so valuable, but what I value the most and what I think is fundamental to the purpose of humanity is human flourishing, this concept of eudaimonia that Aristotle talks about, where you are growing as a person and changing, becoming more enlightened and open-minded through knowledge and through experiences. And I think that for a successful relationship and for a successful family, having this flourishing type attitude by valuing knowledge, it really instills this worth in other people. My parents having that in their relationship, it just really instilled this worth and this desire for ambition vision in my sister and I. I love you guys so much and I will see you in my next video. Bye! Oh, I'm trying, I'm trying.